around. Thank you.
Music.
check, 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 check. One, two, two. A two, 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 two. Two, 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 two. Microphone. It's too far away. Oh, oh. Pop screen. Hi. Yes. I sound good. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> I, I look somewhat uh, chaotic, which is how I feel because of this Luma key. Let us change it slightly. Okay. I feel less weird about that now. Oh. It's a, a spatial, a spatio-temporal black hole in my head. Okay, yeah, let's, why don't we just do this? That was three minutes, right? Yeah, okay, so, um, the quick run through, um, in terms of, uh, what was really going on on a technical level, um, today's episode really wasn't as different from previous ones as I was uh, thinking or anticipating it might be. Um, but it had this one special feature um, or special kind of approach that I was using a lot um, in addition to the, the kind of sequence clock routine uh, arpeggiation sequencing thing I've been doing for, for a while. Uh, and it's this um, funnel function. Um, it's somewhat of a play on words or a play on sounds um, of ASL, where it is, it's kind of like ASL but for functions, um, where it'll take uh, a line from A to B. Here's the, here's the camera. Uh, a line from A to B and uh, slew across that uh, from, from point A to point B. And uh, it'll kind of put, uh, it'll, it'll like turn it into samples, right? It'll like, it'll have a frame rate and like send out a value at each point uh, in order to have the appearance of having a continuous line, even though it's in fact not continuous. So, uh, I can demonstrate this. Um, I've aliased clock.run to CR at this point. It doesn't help that much. I still have to figure out, there's so much uh, infrastructure every time I want to say, do this thing repetitively in time. Right? I would love to, I got to find a way to make that um, easier. But if we just do this thing, so why don't we make a, a different scale? Everything's always in C, I'm sorry about that. We'll figure it out one day. Um, does anyone, what, what number should that be? Is it an eight? <laughs> I think, no, I think, I think it's a nine. It's a major six, right? Anyway, it actually doesn't matter. And we'll play it in fourths just for some fun. Uh, that mix, let's turn the feedback. No, we can just turn the mix down. So 
So this should be pretty, pretty okay, pretty normal. Uh, I'm gonna need to run this again. So we're gonna play the note, which is the Dorian scale divided by 12 with, say, some value. Oh yeah. Oh, CPU timed out. Oh, <laughs> cool. I, uh, I failed to tell it to wait. So it was just trying to play an infinite number of notes all at once. But if we say clock sync, um, Cool, so, you know, it's just that we have a note sequence. Uh, is that too quiet? Yeah, it's panned all the way, I'm sorry. That's, uh, I can fix that. There we go. Great, okay, so this is the kind of standard thing I've been doing for ages. Uh, you know, you play, you play this scale here, a Dorian scale, and, um, because we're using this clock.sync function, uh, we have to, we can change the speed by changing the clock tempo. So uh, let's see what it is right now. 120, okay. So we could speed it up. We can speed it up a lot. Or a lot, a lot. But if you want to do that continuously, like how do you do that, right? Like you have to call it repeatedly and there's lots of different ways you can do that. Um, but if we just had a function that would update that thing, then all we have to do is have a, we need one function that has a timer that create has a changing variable and another function that applies that changing number to the clock tempo. And that's what that's what funnel does. So we pass it, the first argument is a function. So in this case, we're gonna make a function. It's gonna take a tempo or yeah, a tempo. And it's going to apply it to clock.tempo. It's a little, it might seem a little roundabout, but it's necessary. Uh, then we're gonna say where we're starting from here. 120 and we're going to I, I, I made this really weird it uses the kind of hacks onto the ASL 2 function so you, you have a table of two functions so I want to go we're starting at 120 and I want to go to say 480 over what's a nice number 3.14 no it's too slow come on 31.4 seconds. It's going to take a long time, but we got we have lots to talk lots to talk about. So this will gradually increase in tempo.
yeah, it jumps kind of. Right. That, that's, that is exactly the point that I was hoping somebody would、um, pick up on, right? And it did a weird thing at the end there. I'm not sure why it stepped back. However,、um, either way,、um, we can pass it an additional argument to say do this more frequently. So the default is 15 frames per second, which for like a. If you're modulating, say, a,、uh, a synth parameter that isn't pitch and isn't volume,、um, over I2C, 15 is plenty. You'll still, you'll still experience it as a continuous change.、Um, but for some things, 15 is not enough. And especially because we're on Crow itself, we're not, we're not using I2C yet,、um, we, can, we can go higher. So let's go to 100 frames a second and see what happens. There. One thing I'll, I'll note here is Funnel returns the clock routine that it creates. So you can, you can save it into a function, into a, into a, a variable, sorry, not a function.、Um, like this. Because if I, if I call it again right now, there's going to be two competing funnels on, like trying to change the, trying to call the same function. It'll do weird things. So let's just kind of override it.、Um, I might restart it here. Oh, and we, I guess we stopped at. So, this should、uh, arrive at 480 and stay there. I don't know if it will. Either, <coughs> Either way,、um, maybe the clock tempo is not working properly, but let's. We can, I don't know if it's still running, but either way, we can cancel it. So, we can basically cancel this, this line.、Um, and let's see what it got to. Yeah, 480 more or less. The math isn't perfect,、um, not because it can't be, but because this is just a script. It's not meant to be a library or anything.、Um, and I figured this kind of inaccuracy was fine by me. You know, 0.01 of a beat per minute. Cool, so、um, let's bring it back. Nice and slow.、Um, and why not? Let's go a little bassier, just for a change.、Um, so, what do we have here? Basically, that's, that's, the, the whole, that's what it does, right? In terms of how it's implemented, it's not, it's not that big. It's what, 16 lines?、Oh, wait, if I highlight it, it's easier to read, right?、Um, I appreciate this is maybe a little dense to kind of. Rock all at once.、Um, but I almost don't really want to talk about the implementation. Like, I'll, I'll post this online so you can、um, work through it yourself if you want to kind of understand more how it works.、Um, but fundamentally, it's the same technique as ASL uses.、Um, you know, you take your beginning point, you take your end point,、um, you find the difference between those two. And then you also say how, how long your time is. Like in ASL, the sample rate's fixed, whereas here we have this variable frames per second.、Um, 
And so what that's used for is one, to calculate the step size, um, so that you know you have to go this far and you say, okay, I know there's going to be a total of 3,400 steps. So I divide the distance by that number and that's how much I step each time, the increment. Um, well, here it's called the step size. Um, and then it's also used to calculate this clock dot sleep here, which is basically the inverse of frames per second. So 15 frames a second is going to be one over 15 um, every sample. The last trick here is actually quite simple, right? It's just using this for loop. Um, and this is just interest. This is just special, interesting. Um, because this is the thing that allows you to iterate through the table of two calls. So we could we could get rid of this um, and like actually simplify the the syntax down here, right? So um, these don't need to be two calls. Um, I just did it because it felt easier somehow. Um, but these could just as well be uh, tables. Like this. Uh, the reason I, I the reason I went with the two idea is I felt like this concept is so similar to how ASL works that I like the idea of being able to you know put loop in the front of here and have this run forever. I haven't implemented that um, because you know this was just for a performance um, or just to kind of demonstrate a technique. But implementing this would not be particularly difficult. Uh, we could even do it today if we want. Uh, basically, at Synthative, yeah, to... ASL is pretty strange, but um, I, the easiest way to know what stuff does is look at the source. Um, I'm afraid that's all you can do. Um, but, yeah, there we go. Function 2. It's actually very simple. Fun uh, the 2 function really just wraps the values in a table with some defaults and appends this, uh, or puts this string two in the front. So effectively, it's really just a table, you know, it's nothing fancy. Um, but I wanted to kind of emphasize this similarity so that when you saw funnel, that you would say, oh, that like, this feels like ASL. So when I'm writing it, you know, it feels like ASL. And when I'm when I'm coming up with a concept for like, or like for a composition, like what what should that feel like? Okay. So, just to the last piece of demonstration I want to do with this is to show how it works over I two C. Um. And this is actually really beautifully simple, right? Um, so all we're gonna do is choose a parameter that we wanna change. Um, so there's kind of, there's a couple things we could do, right? We could do, do a delay parameter or we could do a synthesis parameter. At the moment we have this just friends is hooked up and then this uh, these two widths are, are both attached all on I2C. Um, the left is the synthesis, the right is the delay. Um, and right now, seeing as we're just playing these tones, why don't we uh, do something with the, with the synthesizer, right? And a parameter that's going to be quite strange. Well, let's do one that's like nice and simple, right? So we can do 
all we have to do give it here is a function. So let's just say ws.ramp. So this is um, in long form ii.wsyn.ramp. Typically, you would just type this and call it as a function with a value. Um, but here, we're going to pass it as a function. So uh, this is one of those things where it's like, if you've if you haven't programmed before, this probably doesn't seem weird. But if you have programmed before and you're not used to a functional language, this might seem very strange. Um, but you can just... So this is basically a recipe for how to change the ramp of the synthesizer in the future. Um, like this. Uh, then we're going to say, let's start at... I believe it's at zero right now, which is the center point. And then we're going to do a, a sequence of two um, settings. So let's say we want to go to five over five seconds. And then let's go back to zero over two seconds or even faster. Let's say like 0 0.5. It's maybe not as super obvious as it could be. Let's make it a little, uh, so you might've heard it has a little bit of a, uh, a graininess to it when it gets to the top. So let's try going a little bit faster. Let's go, oh, well, we'll double the speed. That sounds really nice. I like that a lot. I'm going to decrease it a little bit just to uh, uh, to make it simpler. <laughs> and I'm going to save this whole, I'm going to save this as a function. Um, called rr for ramp. I'm not going to give it any arguments. It's just going to be that. So now if I call rr, this nice little swell and then like a quick like a pullback right at the end so let's do it let's write another one and it'll be for something a little more strange so I'm gonna use the shorthand this time so I, I have WS I pretty much always alias it to um, ii.wsyn So ws dot fm ratio. I'm going to increase the sorry. Uh, basically, I want to turn up turn up the amount of modulation. Yeah, no knobs, just first class functions. That's uh, that's very map core. <laughs> All right, so let's write this funnel. I'm gonna change the ratio. So I'm gonna change the quality of these harmonics that are being added that you just you might have just heard be introduced. And. So this function, uh, FM ratio is a little strange, or it might seem strange. Um, you've noticed, I, I don't know if you can see here, but we called FM ratio one comma one. And what that means is uh, a numerator of one and a denominator of one. But on, which is really useful if you're using like teletype um, because you don't have floating point numbers. So you can do these perfect integer 
um, ratios that, you know, if you actually divide them, they become very small numbers. But on Crow, you actually only need the first argument. You can do the math on Crow. So I could just as easily have done one divided by one, even though that's going to be one in the end. But I could do three divided by two, and it would send 1.5 to two width. So we actually, we don't need to do a whole, uh, um, ratio here. We don't need two arguments to this function. One will do. And it's continuous, which is where it's going to sound weird. <laughs> so we're going to start from one. And then we're going to do a sequence of twos, start, uh, going firstly Why don't we just go big to start with, and then we'll, we'll dial it back. So let's go up to, say, 11. So it's going to get really chaotic and noisy up here, but we're going to try it out. And go to 11 over 1 in 11 seconds. Why not? Let's do it. Let's see what happens. crystals. So to me, that final glissando at the end, because of 15 frames a second, you hear it as these discrete, like, crystals. So I'm actually thinking, what if we slow down the frames? Right? What if we actually emphasize the granular quality of this? So 15 is the default. What if we turn it down to 5? So this is nice, um, but I think that number almost could be different each time. And, and I think also this doesn't need to be quite as, as slow. So I'm going to save it as a function, and this one I'm going to call, we call the other one RR for rising ramp. So let's call this RF for rising FM. And it's going to have a, a variable, so FPS. And I'm going to replace that 7 with that variable, and that should do it. So now if I... I think maybe 6 is what I want. And we can combine them. <laughs> yeah. 
So you might notice、uh, the rising ramp, ramp and FM, they have this incredible interaction.、Um, we can try it again. Okay, so we have these,、uh, these functions, right? We have these, like, it's almost strange to call them functions because they're not. You don't give it a thing and get something out. You give it a thing and it creates an action, it creates a, a passage over time. And it does it、uh, with a remote device, without using voltage. It's quite, it's quite strange. <laughs> And now we're back at one. Back at、uh, this、uh, like sine wave times a sine wave thing. Which gives you that octave up、uh, harmonic coming through strongly.、Uh, so, what else can we do with this? I, I, I am inclined to think of something with the delay instead.、Uh, so, with the. With a performance, if you'll allow me to call it that earlier,、um, I ended it by basically really slowly sliding the feedback away from infinite feedback.、Um, so that the. Because basically, what I was doing, I, what I did at the end to like capture the performance was I turned the feedback to 100%, then I turned off the, the driving. Clock that was making notes on the synthesizer.、Um, so there was no more notes being created, but it had created an infinite loop. And then decreased the feedback slowly so that it would kind of start fading out and then rapidly, rapidly fall off.、Um, but we could do something similar, I think, with.、Uh... Firstly, right now, I think the mix is turned off on the, on the delay. So why don't we slowly ramp it up? So it's currently at negative five, and let's take it up to zero for an even mix of dry wet.、And、we can do it over a long time.
I just destroyed that function. Whatever. Um, doesn't matter. Okay, so currently the delay loop is very long. Um, so what we could do here is we can... Just to kind of get things moving, why don't we freeze it? So what I've done here is I'm now just listening to the delay buffer inside of with. Um, there's no more notes being generated. So there's a little hiccup in the loop because it's not uh, synced up. It seems almost like it's getting quieter, which it shouldn't do. Oh! <laughs> because I didn't actually tell it to freeze. Okay, so we're gonna have to change, do a couple things here. Let's... Can we really not scroll further? Here we go. I'm just going to transcribe these functions so that we can uh, refer to them actually kind of coded out. So, st ostensibly, <laughs> this should, uh... I want to modulate the, the, the timing of the synthesizer, it's too... too regular.
So I'm just gonna create like a an up and an up and a back. Okay, uh, let's, let, let's take this somewhere different, right? So we currently have this, this loop now, it's captured inside of width, and what I want to do is kind of, is let's like play around with the delay loop, right? Like we can play with the delay line, and we have two different ways to do that. Um, one and two. The first one is we can change where the playhead is, we can jump around the loop. Um, and the second one is we can change the rate and that'll kind of re-pitch it as we go. Uh, but why don't we start with the like cutting up the loop and the easiest way, let's look at what the list is, right? Um, so I think the thing we want is this thing called I think we want cut. Um, so there's these three functions, length, position, and cut, and they all kind of work together um, to choose a, a loop within the full delay, the take delay, you know, if you think of it as a take, it has like a certain size, and length says, okay, I want to take half of the size. Position allows you to move that half around and then cut, moves the actual playhead within that loop size. But right now, I think we don't even have a subloop, we're just on the whole thing. But we should be able to cut around the, the tape. So let's try it. I think it takes a, a ratio. So, I think it's, you just like do like one out of 16. So this is all well and good, you know, we can jump around, but what if we want to treat it, what if we want to change the speed of the loop without changing the pitch? We can do like a granular trick with this using the funnel function um, to basically kind of have the playhead moving and as it goes be continually jumping it back. So it kind of zigzags forward. So let's try something like that. Um, because it needs to be a ratio, we actually need to wrap wd.cut in a function, and it'll look, it'll look something like this. Take the position, and 
all it does is call wd.cut with So if, why don't we treat position like 0 to 1 and therefore we can just say like and we'll quantize it to every 128 steps or something. So we can say 128 times pulse over 128. This is a little it's a little weird, but I think it should work. That's our function. We're going to start at 0 and we're going to do a sequence um, all the way to 1 over the course of... How long is this loop? Seems like about 7 seconds. So let's, let's actually speed it up. Um, so we're going to do it in 3 seconds. Let's see if this works. So I think that worked, um, but it was just quite strange, like strange sounds. Um, if we speed up the tape a little bit, and now let's try and slow down the loop. Maximum's 255. It's an 8-bit number. So I'm going to do it twice, just for effect. So I think we're kind of, we're into like pole stretch territory here. Reverse playback. Uh, the width delay doesn't do reverse playback. That's an interesting idea, though. Uh, I kind of like this super like aggressive granular thing. <laughs> So why don't we try, um, at a much slower rate, why don't we try moving the position of the loop? So I can't, I just set it to be half the size with this, uh, length. Why don't we make it even smaller? So it's a nice little loop. Um, 
So why don't we have this window shift over time? So rather than do like an explicit granular thing, why don't we have it be something that changes over a much longer period, but less frequently? So we could do it something like this. It's position. Yeah. So we're going to start... We can still do the same thing. We're still going to start at zero. Um, and we're going to go to one. Yeah, and we'll do it over 16 seconds, but let's decrease the frame rate. Right? Like, let's... So this frame rate essentially gets to choose uh, how often we reset. You know, it becomes our like brain size. So I think this loop is like about 0.8 seconds. So we can actually like we can we can use floating point numbers here. It doesn't matter. Um, so if I do 1 over 0.8, I think that'll mean that it's 0.8 seconds per frame. We'll find out. It's maybe hard to hear it. Let's let's try it. Maybe this is broken. I think it's broken, but I think we can get around it. Basically, we need to reset the length function every time we call it. And well, we can do that. All we have to do is add it in here. I like this, but I want to go even, even more, like, little tiny crystals. I always talk about crystals. I'm really, like, I'm very much not that person. It's funny. This is kind of fun. It's almost like reverb. Like a broke, really broken reverb.
I'm, I want to add a little bit more sound into this. Um, so I'm basically going to cut in and out um, the freeze. So currently it's, you know, the, the delay line's frozen. Like we can't get, uh, the sound that's coming in from Mangrove is it's not being recorded. But if when I flip down, it's going to get recorded. And it's probably going to overdub really quickly, so I'm just going to try and stab it in and, and get it straight up, straight back up. Okay, so this grain is now mostly mangrove. So why don't we jump to a different... Or why don't we play this back, and while we're doing it, we can insert some sound over top. open up the length a little bit so I can get kind of wider uh, more more subtle or more smooth uh, overdubs
I sequencing mangrove or just knobbing it? Just knobbing it. <laughs> uh, tuning is always the hardest part. Um, but as long as you're okay with, uh, does it feel good? And I think you're fine. All right. Um, I feel like we've, I've been doing this for long enough that there's probably like a nice little loop um, in here. So what I'm gonna do is open it up to the whole, the whole section.
All right, yeah, uh, I'm getting carried away. I love that. Um, it's really fun when it's really, it's like it's really, really nice when you you keep working on something and you you kind of like let you let it meander. You know, like first we were really focused on these uh, you know, these the sweeps that like builds with like the ramp modulation and the the FM stuff. And somehow, like, using the same technique gets you into, like, manipulating a delay line, manipulating a, some kind of, like, looper. Um, and then there's some analog stuff that you, like, you just manually throw in there, and then all of a sudden you're, like, piecing it back together. And it, I don't know, it sits nicely. Anyway, I feel pretty good about it. Uh, I want to... I think one hard thing about, um, with like performing electronic stuff is oftentimes, you know, you build something up and then you're like, well, how do I, how do I take this somewhere new and, and, and how do I take it somewhere new without spending my whole time focused on, on the taking it there rather than on where we're going. And I, I'm still, like, I'm not there yet, you know, that's still, that's, for me, like, the holy grail of performance, you know, is being able to simultaneously think about where I want to be next, and then kind of effortlessly slide over there. Um, but I think these, te these kinds of techniques um, could be really useful in that endeavor. Um, and one example is... Um, right now, what I want to do is basically have this like delay loop playing. What I want to do is I want to have it fade out um, in a way that's subtle and allows me to kind of insert things on top of it, um, like kind of work through it, but without needing to be hands on. I don't want to be holding a knob, turning it down really slowly. You know, like we've all been there and. It's, it gets, uh, well, you can't be thinking ahead when you're, you're so hands-on like that. Or maybe you can be thinking ahead, but you can't be acting ahead. So what I want to do is I'm going to script up a single line that's going to, like one command that I can hit enter on. And when I hit enter, I'm going to have 30 or 40 seconds or some amount of time um, during which I can figure out what's next. And like today, there's probably not going to be a next. But the idea is to at least like position myself such that I have time to make that decision. Um, so I'm just going to write it as a sequence of commands. Um, we're just going to do it in Druid straight, like nice and simply. So I'm going to unfreeze the delay, uh, but first I'm going to set the feedback to maximum, or almost maximum. Yeah, this is a very slight amount less than 100% feedback. Um, also, I'm going to set the, the filter on that delay line to be to there, like just uh, 3.5, you know, so this is kind of gently rolling off what's in the, the delay line. Um, and so what's going to happen is the loop's going to sound like it's degrading. Yeah, that's probably about what it's already set to, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, so I could absolutely do something here with, uh, with the funnel function to slide things around, but actually, I don't really need it in this moment. Um, so I might just hit this and then we'll kind of experiment with uh, other elements. Uh, I'm going to let this fade out a little faster, actually. 
So let's, let's see what happens. It should be very subtle when it begins. I think we're off, uh, we've gone off track. <laughs> uh. Okay, and just for some fun, to, uh, to end us off, let's do a, a fun... Oh no, this is broken. Did I restart? Let's find out. Oh, it's a function. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um. We'll start at one. We're going to go to Turn it up so that you can hear this. Oh, 
<laughs> I can't turn it up. Okay, I think that's uh, that's today's adventure. Um, oh, one quick thing before we go, I was just gonna mention this uh, this silly thing that I I didn't think about enough to make it work. Um, but I was watching the I was watching like these guitar um, tutorial videos with uh, Pat Martino. And he has this concept about um, chords where basically on the guitar you can think of you can think of every chord as being um, a manipulation of a diminished chord or an augmented chord. So the idea of breaking up and it's related to how the guitar lays things out. Um, but what I was trying to do was this idea of having uh, the notes table be alternating between a diminished uh, seventh triad and a augmented, or a diminished seventh uh, arpeggio and a augmented, well, it's just an augmented arpeggio. Um, and then having this alteration applied and so it wasn't really working here, but the idea was to have like a group of four notes and then four more. I think I changed it uh, in Druid, but that's the idea. Uh, it didn't work very well, but um, it's because I didn't practice that particular part. <laughs> uh, but I digress. Um, there's always more to learn. Um, if somebody wants to know more about that, um, I will post the link. It's just on YouTube. Okay, uh, well, thanks for... Thanks for dropping by. This was fun. I feel like I felt the least sure of what was going to happen, and I also feel like we got to the most musical of places, thankfully. So thanks for being here. Uh, farewell. <laughs>